Okay, hey, practice 10.6. On the first page here, we have some algebra review. So first it says factor the common factor out of each expression. So that just means I'm thinking, well, what goes into 12k squared and 15? Well, k doesn't, or k squared, because there's no k in that second term. But I'm thinking, what goes into 12 and 15? So um, 3 goes into both of them, right? Because 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 5 is 15. So... <coughs> I can factor a 3 out of this, and then I'm just thinking 3 times what equals 12k squared, and 3 times what equals 15. So I'm kind of thinking about undistributing it in a way. <clears throat> so 3 times 4k squared would give me 12k squared, and 3 times 5 would give me 15. And then this is factored, and you kind of want to check your answer. There's nothing that goes into 4 and 5, so I know that this is completely factored. Um, second problem, the only thing that goes into 3p and into negative 3 is 3. And then I'm kind of just thinking what goes in these blanks. So if I was distributing the 3 in, I'd have to multiply it by p to get 3p, and I'd have to multiply 3 by negative 1 to get 3. So 3 times the quantity p minus 1. Okay, next up. All right, so in this one, we've got 8 and 10 for the coefficients. So there are some, some things that go into 8 and 10. But also, I've got r's in both expressions. Okay, so there are, I can take out a number and an r. So um, for 8 and 10, they're both even numbers, so 2 goes into them. 4 goes into 8, but it doesn't go into 10. And so the, the biggest number that goes into both of these is 2. And then an r also goes into both. Okay, and then I'm thinking what goes in those slots, 2r times something equals this, 2r times 4r. Those multiplied together would give me 8r squared, and 2r times 5 would give me 10r. Okay, so some people on this one, they're going to um, just factor out the 2, and that would give you 4r squared plus 5r. But then you, it's not completely factored because you could still factor the r's out, right? So then you'd want, if you did that, that's okay, but then you just have to go another step and also factor out the r. And that would give you the same results. Okay? Or some people might just factor out the r, but then you could still factor out the 2 afterwards as well. Okay? All right, so you always kind of want to check for common factors. On 4 through 9, there are no common factors in these, but you kind of want to spot check for that as you go. Okay, so now I'm factoring trinomials. So um, this first one, if this is factorable, I'm kind of thinking about FOIL. So I know um, if it is factorable, it's going to have to be n times n for my firsts to get n squared. Okay. So then the question is, what goes in back of both of these? Um, um, and you can do this a number of ways. I'm going to do this with the diamond problem. So that means I'm going to take this coefficient here and put it up there. And I'm going to take the 12 and put it down here. And if you have a different method that's working for you, that's totally fine. This is one of many ways to do this. Okay. So this diamond problem's a little puzzle here. I uh, want to figure out what goes in these two slots. So I'm looking for two numbers that add to 7. Those same two numbers I want to multiply to get 12. So I'm kind of thinking in my head, or maybe even writing it down, the ways that I can multiply to get 12. Uh, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. I could also do uh, the double negative versions of these. So like negative 1 times negative 12, negative 2 times negative 6, negative 3 times negative 4. But the only one of these, even if I wrote the rest of those out, the only ones that would add up to positive 7 would be 3 and 4. Or you could call it 4 and 3, it doesn't matter. And that tells me what goes in the back here of both of these. Both of those are positive. And there we go. And again, if you did x plus 4 times x plus 3, that's fine. That means the same thing. Right? Okay. All right, so next one, I'm going to set up a diamond problem here again. So the 7 goes on top, the 10 goes on bottom. So I'm thinking, the multi I usually start with the bottom, because there's actually an infinite amount of ways you could start getting into negative numbers for the adding. But for the multiplying, it's pretty limited. Okay, I've got those. I've also got the double negative versions. 
but I've already found my winning combo. It's going to be 2 and 5. So that's what's going to go in the back of my parentheses here. Okay. And honestly, when I do these problems myself, I don't use diamond problems, but I'm doing that same thinking. The diamond problem is just to get you used to thinking, okay, well, I need two numbers that will multiply to negative 5. The same two numbers will add to positive 4. Since this is the first one that involves a negative 1, I'll, I'll still do a diamond problem here. Okay, so multiplying to get negative 5, I could do 1 times negative 5 or negative 1 times positive 5. Okay, so only one of those adds up to positive 4. It's this one. Okay, so then I've got x minus 1 and x plus 5. Again, you could put those, you could reverse the order of those binomials, but the 1 has to be negative and the 5 has to be positive for it to work. Okay, I'll do this next one without a diamond problem. So I'm thinking, all right, now it's going to look like this. Multiplying to get 20, I could do 1 and 20. I could do 2 and 10. So 1 and 20, there's no way I can get adding or subtracting. There's, with a 1 and 20, there's no way I can get negative 9. There's no way I can do that with a 2 and a 10. But with a 4 and a 5, 4 plus 5 is 9. So I'm kind of in business there. But I don't want a positive 1 and I, 9. I want a negative 9. So I'm thinking negative 4 and negative 5. These two numbers multiply to positive 20. They add to negative 9. Okay. All right, same kind of thing here. I want two numbers that will multiply to negative 4. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe a 1 and a 4 or a 2 and a 2. And since I'm adding them to get 3, I think a 1 and a 4 is more promising. Because if the 4 is positive and the, and the 1 is negative, then that works, right? Those multiply to negative 4. They also add to positive 3. Any of these problems, if you're not sure about your answer, you can always multiply it back together, foil it together, and if it gets you back where you started, then you know you did it correctly. Okay? And then this next one, I want 2, and this starts with Bs instead, right? Instead of Xs or Ms. So, I want two numbers that multiply to 12, something 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and I want two numbers where I can either add or subtract to get a negative 1, because my coefficient here is negative 1, right? So the 3 and the 4 sound good to me because they're only one apart from each other. So if I had a positive 3 and a negative 4, that would work. That's my winning combo. Okay? All right. And then we're going to solve by factoring. So notice the difference between these problems and these ones. These ones are equal to zero. They're equations. So solve means find the value of the variable. Well, I'm going to start this out in the same way. I'm going to factor the trinomial. Okay. So I'm thinking multiplying to get six, one and six, or two and three. And actually I could get fives with one and six or two and three. So I've got to think about this carefully. Okay. So I know, um, so actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do the diamond problem here because I see mistakes on this a lot. So I'm adding to get negative 5, multiplying to get 6. So there are my different options to multiply to get positive 6. Only one of those combos, though, adds up to negative 5. Okay, now I've got to take this a step further. So I'm going to use the zero product property. I've got two things whose product is, is zero. I'm multiplying two things together, and I get zero. So that means it either has to be zero times something or something times zero. One of those two factors has to equal zero. So that means either p minus 2 equals zero or p minus 3 equals zero. Then I can solve both of those. And so here I've got two different solutions. Both of these work. Um, in that equation. You can always substitute them back in to, um, to see if they balance out. So, you know, we're taking this a step further from factoring. A lot of people just factor this and say, oh, there's my answer. Well, that's not solving anything. That's just factoring it. You have to then use the zero product property. Okay. So I'm going to use capital B's so they don't look like sixes. Okay, multiplying to get negative 3, either 1 times negative 3 or negative 1 times positive 3. I'd want 1 and negative 3 for them to add up to negative 2. 
and then zero product property. And there we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's factor. So to multiply to get two, it'd have to be one and two, or negative one and negative two is the better call there, the only call. Zero product property then. There are my solutions on that one. One left. On this side, at least. Okay, so multiplying to get one, one times one, but hey, that's a negative, so I actually want negative one times negative one. Okay, and now these both give me the same result. So you don't have to li list it twice. You can just say that's supposed to be an n. Um, we can just say that n equals zero. Okay, so it's important to know how to factor and to solve by factoring because it comes up in this section. So with that uh, in mind, let's head on to the second side. Um, all right, so now we've got a circle. We've got these two chords that meet inside the circle. And when this happens, each chord is cut into smaller segments, like I got the six and the X here, okay? So the product of those two pieces, the six and the X, is gonna be equal to the product of the two pieces of the other, the two bits of the other um, chord. So, like that. So when they meet inside, that's all you do. So six X is gonna equal 36. And dividing by 6, x is going to be 6. Okay, Same kind of deal here. I've got some more complicated expressions, but I'm still going to do 15 times the quantity. Make sure it's times the quantity 2x plus 2 is going to equal 12 times the quantity 3x plus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to want to start simplifying here so I'll distribute on both sides to get rid of the um, to get rid of the parentheses okay now I want to start combining like terms I'll subtract 30x subtract 12. and divide by 6, and x will come out to 3. Okay, next up. So um, next one is a little different because um, we don't have <coughs> segments meeting inside the circle. Here they meet outside the circle. So the way you want to handle this, um, let's take... Um, Let's take the bottom path first with the 3 and the 5. So I'm going to take the part on the outside times the whole thing. Okay, And then I'm going to do the same thing with this other path. I'm going to take the part that's going to equal the same thing for the other piece. So there's my little formula. So the part on the outside on this bottom path is the 3. Okay, a lot of people will say, oh, it's going to be 3 times 5. Well, 5 isn't the whole thing. By the whole thing, I mean 8. That's the length of the whole segment, okay? And then I'll do the same thing on the top path. So the, the part on the outside is the 4. The whole thing is going to be 4 plus x. That whole distance is 4 plus x. I have to add those two bits together, okay? So there's my setup there, okay? 3 times 8 is 24. On the other side, I want to distribute the 4, so I'm going to get 16 plus 4x. Okay, I'll subtract 16. A equals 4x. Divide by 4, and x equals 2 then. Okay. All right, let's try it on 17. Part on the outside times the whole thing. Now, the whole thing, remember, is 9 plus... 2x plus 3. The 
my whole thing is right there, 9 plus 2x plus 3. And then for the other piece, the part on the outside is the 10. The whole thing would be 10 plus x plus 8. Okay. I could distribute right now, but I'd rather simplify inside of the parentheses first. So I'm going to combine the 9 and the 3 there and the 10 and the 8 over there. Okay. Oops, I forgot my equal sign. All right, and then I will distribute. Okay, I'll subtract 10x. Then I'll subtract 180, oh sorry, I'll subtract 108 I mean, so that will leave me with 72 over there, and then divide by 8, x is going to equal 9. Kind of running low on space here. Okay, alright, next problem, same kind of deal, part on the outside times the whole thing. I'm going to start on that top, top path. 8 plus 19 is going to be 27. Part on the outside is 8. Whole thing is 27. And then for the 3x, part on the outside is 3x. The whole thing would be 8x. Okay, so 8 times 27 is 216. 3x times 8x, well, 3 times 8 is 24, x times x is x squared. Okay, now I'm trying to isolate the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 24. And I got 9. Okay, and then I want to take the square root of both sides. Okay, and technically you could have positive or negative 3 algebraically, but in the diagram a negative 3 wouldn't work because then I'd get a, length, a segment length of negative 9 and a segment length of negative 15. So I'm only going to use the positive root there just because the negative 1 doesn't work with a diagram. Okay? All right. So um, uh, number 19 is a little different because I've got a tangent segment this time. Okay? I'm going to deal with this part just the same. So I'm going to take the part on the outside times the whole thing. Okay, so the part on the outside is the 48. The whole thing would be x plus 48. Okay, and then um, with the other side, I'm actually going to do the part on the outside times the whole thing again. But the whole thing is the same as the part on the outside because there's no part on the, you know, it really is the outside times the whole thing, but they're both 60. So I have 60 times itself, also known as 60 squared. Okay? So let's distribute. Calculator for that. Don't need one for this though because 6 times 6 is 36, and 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, so let's subtract um, 2,304. That gives us 1,296 on the right side. And then divide by 48. We got exactly 27 there. Okay. All right, same kind of deal here. Part on the outside times the whole thing would be 9 plus x. And then part on the outside times the whole thing, 12 times 12. Is 
Okay, I'll subtract 81. And divide by 9. Side times the whole thing. Let's see, 18 plus 14, that's going to be 20 and 12, 32. And then part on the outside times the whole thing, so x times itself. All right, 18 times 32 is 576. Then I'll take the square root of both sides. Okay. And I can see, looking at the diagram, I'm going to need x to be positive because I need that segment to be positive. So I'm only going to take the principal root here, the positive one, and that's going to come out to exactly 24. Okay. All right. Last one. Part on the outside times the whole thing. The whole thing would be x plus 10. Part on the outside times the whole thing, which is itself. Okay, so I've got x squared plus 10x equals 144. Okay, I've got two different x terms. Okay, so you could, some people might try to say, oh, let me factor the left side of this because there's two x terms. I can factor out an x. Well, that would put you right back where you started. You only want to do that if you have this equal to 0. And in fact, that's what we want to do right now. We want to subtract 144 from both sides. So that is going to set it equal to 0. Okay. And now I've got this set up so I can factor this and I can use the zero product property. So that's why I was reviewing the, that factoring. Okay. So let's set up a diamond problem here. Okay, so the first thing that I think of when multiplying, well, I'm adding at the top, multiplying at the bottom. First thing I'm thinking of with 144 is 12 and 12. Well, one would have to be positive and one would be negative. So that's not actually going to work. I mean, I can put that on my list here. Um, so, you know, I'll start putting my, my list. And, yeah, one of these would have to be positive and one would be negative. But just to save time, I know I'm not going to get 10 out of adding or subtracting 1 and 144. It actually doesn't work with 12s either, okay? So here's where I start playing around with my calculator. Okay, another option would be to use the quadratic formula. Then you don't have to play around with these, uh, with these options. But um, I don't have time to get into that now. So I'm thinking 144. Well, I know 12 goes into 144, and I know some different things that go into 12. Like I know 4 goes into... Uh, into 12, so it must go into 144. So 4 and 36 would be another option. Okay, but I still don't think I can get um, a 10 out of a 4 and 36. I know I can't. Um, so let's play around with some others. I know 3 goes into 12, so 3 should so 3 and 48 is another one. So I'm hoping not to list every every uh, pair of factors of 144. I just want to find ones that I can get a 10 out of when I add or subtract. Okay. So um, let's see, 36 goes in, so half of 36 is 18. So I know 18 is going to go into, oh, look at that, 18 and 8. Boom, goes the dynamite, right? So that will work. I know one has to be positive and one has to be negative to get the 144. So if we make the 18 positive and the 8 negative, now we're in business, okay? So this is going to factor into x plus 18 times x minus 8. Okay, and what a lot of people will do, they'll say, oh, so x must has to be positive, x is 18. Well, this is just solving the diamond problem. It's not solving the equation. This is just helping me factor this, okay? So I still got to go back and do zero product property. So either x plus 18 equals 0 or x minus 8 equals 0. Okay, if I solve this one, get negative 18. Solve that one, I get positive 8. But wait a second. Look at the diagram. This can't be negative, so I've got to throw that one out. It's an extraneous solution. 
and that means, because if this was negative, I kind of cover that up, right? But that means 8 is my solution, okay? And that is it. See you next time.